What is going on everyone? So today I am going to do a nice suspension upgrade to my 2008 Ford F450. So as you guys know, if you drive a Super Duty or a heavy duty truck, dualies, 250s, 2500s, you all know that when they are unloaded, they ride like crap. There are heavy duty suspensions that really bounce you around when you're not uh, having anything in the bed. So, I went ahead and did some research, and you guys probably heard of these before, and I went out and purchased these, the Celastic Leaf Spring Shackle. So, I'm a little curious to see how much a difference these actually make. You know, you watch all the videos and they show all the compression and how it takes out that little vibration and all that. So. I'm going to go ahead and get these installed and we can take you step by step on how to install them and then take it for a ride and see if it actually makes a difference. The one thing. So, what do you get in the box? Let's go ahead and open this up. However the hell you open it. Ah. College education paying off right there. So, you get shackles themselves, get a bunch of washers, these are for spacers, I'll show what that does in a little bit, and then the other shackle. So let's go ahead and open the shackle and see what that looks like. So first impressions, I'm impressed at how big it is. I thought this was going to be a little bit smaller. I like how they use nice thick steel, it looks like about a quarter inch thick or maybe 5 sixteenths. Um, nice big robust bushings. They got a nice pressed in uh, sleeve in there. Looks like it's brass, but actually it's not brass. It's a uh, grade 8 steel. Um, hence we got grade 8 washers as well. But uh, first impressions with these. I'm actually really impressed in what they they look like. So let's go ahead and get the old shackles off the truck. First thing you're going to want to do is disconnect your shocks because you're gonna have to move your suspension all the way up and down and you don't want your shocks to restrict you so let's go ahead and get this bolt removed so now that I got the bolt undone or the nut if you tap it should come out but see how it's hitting some resistance if you hit a little bit harder you get it to come out and try to grab it Oop. almost knocked the guys over grab it and wiggle it out but if you don't want to fight it and I don't want to fight it what you can do is actually take a jack because right now that shock is trying to push down on that bolt. so what you can do is get a jack in here and you actually jack it up with a block of wood and it will come out much easier you have to put a lot of pressure on it just some and the bolt will just come right out Oh, a little too much pressure. There it goes. And then now the bolt's out. And hopefully when I pull this shock out of the housing, it should drop. Because if not, that means my shocks are blown and I have to be putting new shocks on the rear. So let's find out. Nope, that's good. So my shocks are not blown. You want them to leak out slowly like so. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side and then we'll start working on the shack. All right, the next step is to disconnect the shackle. So this is the shackle right here, it's the connecting point, and that's the leaf springs bolt right there. So first thing, I'm going to get this bolt off, and I'm going to use a 21 millimeter half inch drive with a 24 inch breaker bar. Um, I might have said this in my future video or past videos, but I highly recommend getting yourself a set of half inch drive nuts and sockets if you plan on working on your own vehicle, because I've broken plenty of 3 8 inch uh, sockets and drives before so ain't nothing to it but to do it 
So let's start working this bolt off. So I like when uh, manufacturers do this, they actually put a nut and they kind of press it into this little tab so you don't have to get a, a socket on the other side. You really just get this going and then this tab will catch something and then you just tighten against that. It makes it a lot easier when it's in tight spaces. But for whatever reason, on the next one, they didn't do this. You have to put a wrench on it to get it off. So let's go ahead. All right, so now we got the bottom bolt nut taken off, but the bolt's still in. The next thing to do is to get that top one. Now, you can tell I actually put some, uh, I didn't put penetrate on it, I actually just put some silicone. The reason being is these bolts are not that hard to break. They don't require as much force as you think, because if you think about it, the threading itself is not under the load, it's the shaft where the spring or the leaf rides on. So I just put that on there to make it easier on myself. So without any more explanation, let's go ahead and get that top nut off. So now comes the fun part. You have to get this bolt out first, which is the bottom one. On top, the bolt will have to go over the frame rail. So first things first, let's go ahead and get this bottom bolt out. All right, to get that bottom bolt out, which is this bolt right here, you have to jack up the back of the truck and you gotta take the weight off it. So the way I did it, which was I put my hitch in, put a block of wood, put it on the jack, jacked it up. The bolt should start feeling to come loose. And once it does that, you should just be able to wiggle it out. For the top one, we're gonna have to jack the, or lower the truck. So I actually just killed two birds with one stone. So what I did was, when I lowered the jack down here, I actually moved that up, therefore, Providing the space I need Hold on, let me get you some light Providing the space I needed to get that bolt out. So now that bolt slides right top of the frame rail So let's go ahead and pull this uh, Shackle out This part should be some of the easiest so Slide the bolt out And there goes the shackle by the way, it's gonna fall, as you just saw. Oh, oh. All right, so here we are. We got the original shackle, and then we got the slastic shackle. So this is what I was talking about, that they're very different. So you look at the slastic, we got this nice rubber housing here, or this housing with rubber torsion in it that, that allows this pivot arm to move independent of this. This is the top part, this is the bottom part, so it's gonna sit in the truck like this. So the reason that you have these washers is you got to make sure that these are the same size. So this one fits this way. And if you look, you'll see that these are not the same size. My original one is a little bit thicker than the slastic. So all you got to do is just line up the edges, get your washers out, and eyeball how many you're going to need. So I'm going to need four on one side. So let's go ahead and get this installed on the truck. So right now I still have the truck down with that leaf spring all the way up because I got to put it in the shackle. And the way the shackle is supposed to sit to the left of the screen is the front of the truck and you want the shackle to sit with the meat of it in the back. So let's get sit in like this. So let's go ahead and get that all installed as I keep kicking the camera around. All right, so you have to get that top bolt through. It has to go in the way it came out because if you try to lower it down with the thread aside facing inwards, it would actually hit the frame. So when you lower the truck down to get the shackle off, go ahead and leave it at that position because you know the bolt will fit and they get that uh, elastic shackle in, put the bolt on, I'm gonna hand tie that nut, and then we're gonna work on the bottom.
Now I got both bolts back in. I got the four washers in on the bottom. I will say getting those washers in were a real pain in the ass. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten up these bolts, get the other side installed, and we'll tighten everything down. And next time I check in with you guys, we'll take it for its first test drive. Alright, so now we're all done with the install. If you take a look underneath, we got it installed on this side. The shock is back together, so is that one. We go over to the other side. That one's now installed. So, let's go ahead and see how it rides. Hopefully, it's worth the investment, but I will let you guys know. All right, so took the truck out for his first drive with the springs on it, and I will say it made a big difference. The truck rides much smoother than it did previously. Now, I still do have some, uh, I guess we'll call it chatter or judder on it. It still bounces a little bit, but it's gone down significantly. I am pretty impressed with them. Installation wasn't really that hard. Uh, just it was a lot easier to just jack it from the rear and raise it up and down in one spot than trying to move the jack around and have it on jack stands and all that kind of stuff so I recommend that 